some of the housing on the outskirts of um, Sydney um, probably wouldn't look uh, unlike um, a, a lot of slums in other countries. I think in this time of COVID, the idea that housing acts as a vaccine uh, has gained more traction. We can actually prevent a lot of people, you know, going to their GP or being um, admitted to hospital if, you know, we eliminate um, cold housing or mould from housing. We worked out very early on that if we were going to reduce inequalities, well, it was hard to do it in the money supply, but housing was an area which everyone either aspired to or, or, or lived in. You know, we've all changed the way that we look at our own housing and a little bit about how we look at other people's housing, I think. We haven't kind of moved on from individual awareness to kind of public awareness. So people are only just beginning to speak about healthy housing um, in, you know, in public um, and only a little bit. Um, and it really hasn't made the jump to government, I don't think. A lot of people that decide about what programs to have probably live, live in um, quite healthy housing themselves. So um, in a lot of areas, it's a, it's a problem of poverty. Um, you know, you know, th those people get to choose the worst possible housing. Look, ha uh, housing and urban development and the Department of Health and Human Services, they're not going to merge anytime soon, but they can collaborate. In New South Wales, for instance, that um, the Department of Health is actually running a housing program into Aboriginal communities um, because they've discovered if they fix their housing, they save um, their health budget, you know, more than the cost of their housing programs. And what the problem we had here back in the 80s and 90s basically was we had doctors who were trying to figure out how they could remediate uh, housing hazards. Well, they're not really trained to do that. And then you had some housing people trying to interpret blood lead data or medical data, which they're not trained to do. But if they work together, then they could come up with a plan that made sense. The thing that makes the most difference is joined up government thinking, which links housing, health, well-being, employment. If we actually looked at, at well-being, rather than just looking at what's happening in individual government departments or agencies, um, and looked across those agencies for well-being gains, I think we'd probably get a different outcome. A lot of, I think, what we see coming through um, in terms of the evidence is people who um, are in properties where they might be exposed to mould, um, there might be kind of structural problems, and it's unclear, you know, what they can do in the terms of, in terms of rectifying that, but also in a really competitive rental market where, where it's quite expensive and there's a lot of competition for rentals, people um, feel it's difficult to negotiate um, these kinds of things with their landlords. They might be concerned about a rental increase. We should probably be aiming even higher and saying, what if we had minimum standards in Australia? It needs kind of national leadership. So, you know, we can we need to do lots of things at the state government level, the local government industry research, but but at the moment we don't have clear leadership. I'm being optimistic. I think that we could achieve it. I, I don't know, you know, that um, we would achieve everything in, in five years. I think that there's some things that we can achieve um, more uh, quickly though. Um, some of that is starting to build up these partnerships and work closely and generate the evidence that we need to generate. But also it's really um, arming, you know, people um, with, with this information. You know, as Peter said, if people want to live in housing that's healthy and they can work out how they can know that, that's actually a really important um, fast tracking of, of the, a way that we can start to get action in this space. I will say the housing market doesn't fully work properly because a lot of these health uh, features are kind of hidden. They're not recognized, which is exactly why the research is so critical. Once it's known, the market can begin to monetize some of these benefits and fold it into the normal housing finance structures. You know, combining that science with um, good advocacy is a way to try and make um, housing healthier in Australia and elsewhere. So our Centre for Research Excellence, just to um, finish and sum up, will aim to um, tackle this across three research streams, so looking at life course prevention and intervention, looking at estimating the health gains and the costs associated with um, poor quality housing in Australia, um, and trying to capture some of the complexity of that, so using visualisation and new methods to understand that. And we want to understand that, you know, for all Australians, um, 
Uh, at the same time, we want to build up um, research capacity in this space. So it's something that, you know, Australia can move forward um, and lead into the future.